Yeah, good day, everybody. Welcome to the round table. I'm Luna. Uh, this week we have Donnie, Jules, Polly, mm -hmm. Sharon, and Nase joining us on the night on the round table. And as usual, Nase will be in later. And our brother Donnie donated a tasty morsel for us to feast on this week. And the topic is magic, magic, miracles, and technology. Are magic and magic the same? Do they even exist? Are miracles just magic on an end? Sorry, are miracles just magic or an angelic force from Creator, a spiritual supernatural thing? <laughs> you like that? That was cool. <laughs> Is it all just technology that we don't understand yet? Is technology magic or a miracle? I think they're trying to tell me something. <laughs> in today's world, what do we believe in most? Does technology leave room for miracles? And what realms does magic and magic have power in? And does magic and miracles work together? These questions and more we're going to look at. I had a few little questions on my own and things I wanted to say. Um, I looked up the meaning of miracles and it says a supernatural event, inexplicable explicable by nature or, or science. Well, that's kind of like magic to me, but I think we'll kick off with magic and magic, and I wish Naysay was here because that's one of his topics. And I don't know if people know, but magic and magic are actually spelt different. I never took any notice of this until Donnie actually brought the topic up. Because, um, as you know, I live in my own little world when it comes to the other realm. And um, when I look into this realm and see the what they've put on it like the two different words of magic i've gone oh okay and i wanted to understand that more if people can help me why we have two different words for magic and what's the difference um because they can both be tricks we have magicians but even a magician can pull magic from the ether and this is where i get confused because all magic comes from the ether or the energy realm um and I don't understand why they spell two different magics. So please enlighten me there, somebody. Um, <laughs> and miracles. Well, we all know what a miracle is, but we'll discuss it more because the way it feels and what it looks like can be slightly different. And then when we get to technology, you're going to help me out again because I'm not technologically advanced and it scares me a little. So... This is going to be a really a, interesting conversation. Who wants to go first? It's okay, Luna. I'm tech tarted too. Hey, well, I have a friend in you. <laughs> <laughs> we can hold hands when it gets scary and they talk about all this fancy technology. <laughs> I'll be seeking you out. <laughs> okay. So does anyone want to start? Miracle, magic, magic, miracles and technology. Come on, Donnie. Unmute yourself. <laughs> All right. Oh, I, 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 go ahead. Who's going to start? I'll start. Uh, Jill, you go. I, I appreciate everybody being here and the wonderful miracles that you are. Oh, that's sweet. Hello. Polly. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can Let's hear you. go uh, for it. We're all reluctant to start feeding tonight. <laughs> I can't. I don't think I'm coming through, I guess. Yes, I'll, hold can, on. I'll be back. We can hear you loud and clear, Polly. Oh, okay. So, okay, here's what I wanted to start off with. Uh, I posted a GIF of a lighter. So, a lighter to you and me is... It's nothing magical about a lighter. It's science. It's a flint and gas being pressed up at the same time and it makes a flame. But if you've never seen that before, that's friggin' magic. True. So there's different levels of magic. Um, what used to be magic to us um, as a society or as a human race is no longer magic it's explained by science it's not magic anymore and so that i guess you could say the magic has been taken out of that so if 
that's almost like magic is a, is a negative thing in a way. But it can be. there's also the other kinds of magic where it's like, you know, um, like the miracle of childbirth. That's magical. Like, so, and that's explained by science as well, but yet it's still magical. So I think magic has some kind of a emotional attachment and it's almost individual uh, and it's in it, in the way that like like if you'd never seen a lighter before that you know and you someone pulls out a lighter and lights it and you're like holy shit it takes me 20 minutes to start a fire that's friggin magic um, or whether or not you, you witness something being born which is uh, yeah, you know what I <laughs> yeah this is why it's we're having a conversation like, Polly because the lines between some things are blur not... but in but oh, yeah so it's almost like magic is like uh in a way it's like a veil over the truth but it's one of those veils that's like begging to be pulled off yeah like you you pull that one off first to understand what's really going on but at the same time magic also to me it reminds me of like something very playful and so it, it, it's a, explorative in a way. It helps people explore possibilities. They may not have considered magic as responsible for that. You it's know, a very I cool would say, oh, 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 go ahead, sorry. I was just going to say, uh, the difference between M-A-G-I-C for me and M A. J I C K is that with the first one, the magic one, I don't feel like I have to pull the veil over it. It's I'm happy with it being a miracle, but with M A J I C K, to me it's a trick. Right? I'm trying to think of something that you know yep. obviously we're facing some really interesting magicians right now. Yep. Who yeah, that's seem to have a lot of Right? We have they have seem to have a lot of power. Yeah. I'm more than willing to pull to pull the covers off of them. And that M A J I C K. In fact, I think it's necessary. When did we come up with two versions of the spelling? This is what I was wondering when I got posed the questions: magic, magic, and miracles. I'm thinking, where's the two magics? Well, magic is M A J I C K. Has been around for a while, though. Hey, Malia! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if you're going to join us. Was that Malia? Yes. I was. I was only brought up knowing one way of spelling magic. The other one is very recent to me. Same here. I grew up knowing. Yama, everyone. Yama, Malia. Sorry. sorry. Hey. I grew up knowing uh, the magician on TV that was pulling magic tricks. We had a bit of BS in it because. Um, I saw a book that showed you how to make those magic tricks and it was deceiving and then the kind of magic that I would say me and Donnie would call magic it's more of a spiritual thing working in partnership with energies at their um, if they say yes we do it if they say no we don't um, and I never thought much about it until I grew up and then I found a different kind of magic that wasn't so loving and kind and it was a bit more harsher and enslaving. And then I found another magic called the TV. <laughs> and then I found out there's two different spellings. So here I am sitting here going, hmm, how do I sum all that up and put it in a box? Yeah, Interesting I mean, that there's look at look at the picture that Jules. The word magic. Right, and look at the picture that Jules put in here. Right there, she is, and she she did that thing to the apple to poison Snow White. She's an evil magician, right? So she's a witch. And then if you look at Crowley, so the reason again a word that was probably hijacked. They had the decency to change the spelling. Oh, thank you. And Go refers ahead. to the dark arts. This is kind of a Mandela for me, seeing it like this. I mean, this reads magic mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? 
I remember growing up, or I've heard it, mirror, mirror on the wall. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty famous one, Jules. One that you're saying, yes. No, I agree. But I, I've always heard about this other word, but it's always been connected to the dark arts, right? <coughs> like a like a like a dark witch or a oh again the Aleister Crowley. So there is definitely a difference, right? There's definitely yes. an, and a dark energy that goes to it. And it is interesting how in, in Snow White it's the apple is the poison, the poison apple. Mm -hmm. It's the apple from the Adam and Eve, like kind of an Adam and Eve connection. Yeah. yeah. Apple. Yeah, I never thought of that. But um, when it comes to dark things, I always look at the human because like 85% of the time it's the darkness in the human that makes these things happen, not the dark energy itself. It kind of needs right. the human to play the part and let the darkness in them grow first. Oh, I don't like talking about these dark things. Um, it lets right. the darkness grow in them first and then the energy can connect with it and take part. That's what I see um, because the energy itself has no body so right. it is limited. I don't want to give any secrets away while I'm talking about this either. <laughs> <laughs> but well, Okay, but going back to your comment, what exactly does that have to do with the difference? I think when people started using that energy in a negative way, that's when the difference came. Yeah. I don't know who wrote the words different. We, have, we will have to look at uh, the English language and perhaps some other languages, which I might pop up on the computer, what magic is in other languages um, for, yeah, in the written part, but it just in the spoken living side of it, it's been around for a long time and it's mm -hmm. used for negative and positive uses. Um, but I do, di there's the line that I see distinct is when it comes to using it, whether it's free or enslaved. And that's where mm. the positive and negative comes in, I feel. Um, we, someone I know had a conversation with a so-called white witch, um, and they had a good heart, don't get me wrong, and their intentions were well, but their practice, they didn't realize in their practice they were still enslaving energy. And that is the negative action of it. So any witches out there listening, we're on to you. And if you don't know what you're into, well, you better have no look. Sorry, I look like he's me getting all fiery and passionate. I think I'll shut up. <laughs> that was good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and I want to hear from Donnie. Come on, Donnie, unmute. Put your earplugs in, my brother. I mean, just like the just like the the gift of the mirror being an object that I'm, I'm certain other objects hold that energy too, like divot boxes. Yeah, well, it's in the maker's hands. It depends on the maker. It's like anything. If you um, free people can make bread, but one loaf of bread will be better than the other. Free, free people can make a divot box, but one divot box will be stronger than the other because it lays in the hands of the maker. Sure. Um, I feel like I need to do something before we talk more about the dark magic. <laughs> yeah. I don't want anyone going, oh, is that what you're talking about? I'll come and have a listen. Well, I mean, it, it throughout, throughout my, throughout my, me, I'm speaking for me, I mean, everything, it, every subject that we've talked on Roundtable, there's a duality of, of everything, especially with this topic. I mean, you've got magic with a K, magic with a C, it's all duality. One is light, one is dark, one is good, one is bad. You, it's kind of like magic to me. It, it, it's essentially the same thing, but when you apply light to it, it's spelled one way. When you apply dark to it, it's spelled a different way. 
at its core, it's the same thing, but the outcome depends on the person willing it and intending it. Mm -hmm. And if you were taught magic from a young person, you wouldn't actually be sure of what kind of magic it is till you grew up and realised there was other magics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because um, there are different kinds of magics, and I always believe it's where I definitely you used. I've definitely used magic unintentionally uh, prior to knowing what it was in regards to music. Um, certain chord progressions and certain sounds and certain frequencies. Um, I, I was full aware that the only reason why I wanted to play them was because I personally got enjoyment out of them. It didn't matter if anyone else liked it or not. It was because my brain was reacting to certain distances between notes, and that's how my human brain is programmed to recognize those distances, and I'm attracted to music that does the same thing. Um, to me, that's a form of magic. Yeah. Uh, and they totally use that in all kinds of advertising and um, and, and even just mainstream music, uh, whether it's for advertising or just to sell concert tickets or records or whatever. Um, it's utilized. Yeah. It, to me, that's, that's a form of magic. There's also um, the positive part of the magic I see in music, Polly, is... You know when a band's playing and this one night they're playing this song and for some reason they're all super in sync and they're all super passionate that night and they play the same song but for that night or that that time it's something extra wonderful? Yeah, because the crowd is exactly in sync with the band. And the band's That's all perfectly in magic. sync yeah, with themselves. Yeah, interacting. Yep. I've, I've witnessed that, and that makes for, uh, like, an epic... Um, it's almost like magic is just another way of saying something that's unexplainable. Yeah, well, see, yeah. Does that make it miracles, kind of, in that? Well, I, I don't know. Are there explanations to miracles? Because I think there are more explanations to miracles than there are for magic. Yeah, well, I kind of see them different. Um, this is how I'm seeing it in my head. It's like a timeline. You start off with um, people and magic. And like we just discussed, it depends who wields it and where their heart's at. Um, and then if you can imagine just above, above them in the ether is the energy they use for magic. And then a miracle is like creator comes down and goes, well, I created all that energy so I can do whatever I want with it. And creator does something. And then bang, we all go, wow, did you see that? Because we all knew we had nothing to do with it. And then, it, and then it's a miracle. That's how I kind of see it. In a hole, at a hole. Was that Dottie? Oh, Dottie, come on, speak up, my bro. We can hardly hear you. That would be an act of God, wouldn't it? Yeah, miracle. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I like that. So, Donnie, are we going to talk about our kind of magic? What are we allowed to talk about? Uh, <laughs> uh, we can talk a little bit about um, singing up. Singing? Oh, I don't want to give the secrets away. <laughs> Go on, tell us a little bit about singing, Donnie. Yeah, it's very similar to... Uh, what the religious people were saying, like praying, say if somebody's sick or hurt, they pray for them. And it's their way of healing. And if uh, that said person survives, or uh, it's called a miracle, isn't it? Yeah. We do it very similar when we do what we call singing. We can, in a group, uh, uh, how would, what's the word that you could use for that? Like, in a group, all come in one mind and push that mind out to a person who is sick and needs healing. And that mind, uh, I can't think of 
bloody word they use there. Um, it's like group therapy, for want a better word. Uh, they project their mind into that person to heal. That's what singing's all about. It's a, well, basically the same as praying. Their minds are projected into that person uh, to heal. Some call it magic, some call it miracle. He has an Which one of the both, or are they saying? I was going to ask that, is the healing a form of magic when we look at it that way? Yeah. Or is it science that we just don't know about? Frequency science. Energetic science. Yeah. They don't do a lot yes. in that. That's only becoming more known in the populace yeah. now. Yeah. Well, I think magic has something tied to the amount of stuff that you know. Like if you're if you're completely oblivious to most things, then the simplest thing could be magic to them, where it's just commonplace for you. Yeah, yeah. It's a sliding scale, like Yeah, we use that singing frequency. Uh, all the time. I'll give you an example for women. Um, when a woman's pregnant and the baby's not coming out, we can sing the baby out. And we just sing a song and the baby comes out like the Pied Piper in a way. <laughs> I just realised it. <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm allowed to say here, where we can sing... You know the old saying, we'll sing up a storm? You can sing up a storm, yeah. that's true. You can sing it up. Yeah, there is actual uh, 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 stories of uh, old, old stories of people actually singing a storm up. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, you can, uh, if you uh, ever watch Storm Boy, uh, where, oh, I think his name was Finger Bow Bill, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. I he mean, sung up a storm on that boat. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Now, is that magic? Was that a miracle? Or a, a, a science that we do not know about? Mm. We could make it a science. This is how I feel. It's, um, it's how I feel. part of what Creator made, and we can make it a science if we pull out instruments and measure it. And but they don't have yeah, but there, instruments. What, yeah. Yeah, what type of uh, instruments can we measure that in? We haven't got that technology. No, we got them in yet. our body. Yeah, we got them in our body. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Our, our body has those instruments. Our body, man. People don't realise how clever we actually can be. <laughs> um, so here's another story. Here's another story for you, Anne Marie. Yeah. And the rest of the crew. Now, I heard a story of an elder who was doing a dance, singing, and he took one step back, another step back, and he totally disappeared. 40 metres away, he reappeared within a split second. What type is that? Is that magic? Was that a miracle? Or a science that we just do not know about? Did he walk into one of those slits, Donny? I don't know, but I was just told the story. Yeah. Now, I've seen an elder do this one time. Uh, we're at a pub. At any rate, he was there drinking away, and then all of a sudden he grabbed this woman and he said, and gave her $10. And he said, go over to them poker machines, he said, and put this $10 out in. He, and she said, which one? She said, any one of them. And she went over and put the ten dollars in, and within the I think third call, he won three hundred dollars out of that ten dollars. How do you know? What type of miracle is that? What type of magic is that? Or is it out of science? I don't know, but you're giving away our secrets now. <laughs> 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 they all wonder why we go to the pub. <laughs> I did that. I've got to tell you a story for that. 
when I went to the Elders Olympics of the Elders, one of the aunties, I walked past her poker machine, she grabbed me by the shirt and she and she pulled me over and I went, what is it, aunt? She goes, just stand there, I don't want you to move, because she knew that while I was standing there she'd win money and she started pressing the buttons and winning money. And I'm standing there and 10 minutes have gone past me, can I go yet, aunt? And she's like, just a minute, there's one more. And then, then the dinger went, she goes, okay, you can go now. I'm thinking, oh, I just felt used and abused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're yeah. right. Is that? <coughs> it has to be energy or energy technology. If you go, if we're going to get technology out of it, it works in our bodies and with what happens around of us. Um, but I kind of always said we were the best robots ever made, organic ro robots. Yeah. So we could, if you look at it technologically wise that way, we could say it was i don't know i'm hopeless at technology but as far as magic goes yeah, so am I. yeah as far as magic goes and healing and that it's spot on it's easy to wield if you know what you're doing there's laws to it if you want to live right yeah because we have um yeah. magic people that have both sides eh, donny positive and negative yeah yeah and what happens to the negative ones what's the rest of the mob do uh, they sort of, uh, for want of a better word, they shun them all by using magic. Against them, yeah. How's that? Yeah, eh? Yeah. So I'll pose but this... But a negative can be used as a positive, you know that, Emery. Uh, yeah, it depends on the situation. <laughs> and again, who's, yes. who's wielding it, brother, because we know um, yeah. our... Clever men and women are beautiful. They've got beautiful hearts. When you spend time with them, you yeah. laugh your head off. They're wise. They're just beautiful yeah. people. And the other ones stand out no, from stand them out. because they're everything that's opposite. They're grumpy old people and yeah. they give you that yeah. funny look, eh? You know that funny look, Donnie? They give you yeah. that funny look and it's like, oh, yeah. I'm going to stay away from you. Yeah, it's all good plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. So, Luke. Up this way, there was a clever man up this way, right? He's um, he was a magic man, they called him a magic man. And what they used to do is when there was a sickness in the in the how um, the shack or the house or whatever you want to call it or the campsite, they used to call on this clever man. And he had two dogs, uh, one was red and one was black. The red dog, if it came to your campsite or to your front door and sat there, the person would be healed. But if the black dog came there, uh, to your doorstep or to your campsite, the, um, the person in the house will die. But what type of magic is that? Is that a magic or a miracle or a science? Well, yeah, and I'll say it again, that was yeah. supernatural, which means it was more natural than anything, which makes it a miracle. <laughs> That's what they say, a miracle is a supernatural event. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, met, yeah. I met an auntie, um, she was brought up by the clever people, and um, she pulled me aside one day with the mob. And the funny thing was, we were, we're on the side of the street. She done it on the side of the street. She grabs me and she goes, "If you could have any drink you wanted right now, what would it be?" And I'm thinking, "Oh, I don't drink Coca-Cola and stuff like that. It'd have to be lemon juice, right, with water." And then I thought, "Is that homemade lemonade or is that just lemon juice? What do I say? What do I say?" So I went, "Lemon juice aid." <laughs> And she looked at me and she went, yep, good. And she sort of pulled me behind her and she said, you said the right thing, now we're going to ask the rest of the question, the other mob the question, right? And as they come up one by one, she was asking what she was looking for was who was spiritual in that mob just by asking them. The answer was lemon, but what kind of drink, if you could have any drink you wanted. And if they lanted lemon, she'd pull, yeah, I love lemons. Pull, her, pull us behind her and she knew which ones were which. I was laughing my head off. I'm glad I said lemon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're very strong 
strong, powerful people. All right, back to it. Magic, magic, yeah. miracles. Um, that, I don't know, that's kind of magical to me. That they walk around being magical in a good way. Where's the rest of the crew? I can't hear them. Oh, we're all here. They all went silent all listening to you, my brother. Ah, uh, you better shave me up there, look. <laughs> well, you're the one that cooked this feast. You're the one that cooked this feast. Magic, magic, miracles yeah. and technology. So, Donnie, can I ask you if... So, Donnie, can I they were technology. What they were technology. can you tell us a bit more about organic technology? We could call it or natural well, technology. In my uh, spare time, I do a little bit of research, and it's not much. I just get on YouTube or read books what I can, and I listen to the old native stories first before I listen to the you know other people talk about. Uh, certain subjects, and the one that comes up is megaliths. Now, the whole native story said, let's, I'll be, give you an example, Bolbeck. When they asked the natives there, who built it? Uh, the, the temple, we'll say it, the said temple. And what the natives said, it just appeared overnight. And it's the same in South America. Some of them uh, native people over there say their megalithic buildings and structures just appeared overnight from their ancestors, from their gods. So what is that? Is that a magic? Or is it a miracle? Or is it a science? It's really hard to explain, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You just don't leave me out in the lurch here, you fellas there, look. No, I was just saying, does anyone want to... Else? Anyone else want to interview Donnie while we got him on the platform? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just appreciate you sharing all this because it's... Um, I don't even know... I guess to me, this is part of your communication in the bush that you understand energy, you understand yes. communication, and you understand the connection to each other, their synchronicity. Yes. Maybe maybe the question is not so much miracles, but is there a difference between synchronicity and miracles? Oh, yeah, I never thought of that way, Sharon. Like, I can read some of the bush. I, I was taught how to read the bush. I'm not really good at it, but I do understand some of it. Like, if you got the old, uh, let's see, Nagawa, which is Karawam, most people know him as. If he comes singing past and he's singing out, he's telling you that it's going to be cold and wet. And... If you see a waru, a lone waru, singing out, he's telling you it's going to be hot and dry for at least a week. Uh, yeah, I can see where you're coming from, Sharon. Yes, I definitely do. can see where you're coming from. It's more of a synchronicity. But is that yeah. an exact science? Is it a science? I, or is it I, I, I think the synchronicity is our connection to each other, which is totally, maybe that's part of the miracle. Is that um, one of your folks from Australia gave a speech this week. I was just moved to tears. And what I thought was amazing is, is again, I can hear you. Right? I am on the other side of the world, but I can hear you. We are starting to, I just feel this amazing connection. Now it feels like a synchronicity. It feels like a miracle. Because it's okay. just, to me, it's, it's growing. If that makes sense? Yes, it does to me, Sharon, it does. Yes. And, and I have experienced the healing you were talking about. Because I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a healing that you could do in America where you could, together in a room, and you can look at someone's body 
then you can see what's going on and you can heal it. You can start to heal it. We don't use song, we use prayer. But it's yes. it's similar. Yes, that's exactly right. It's very similar. And it does the same trick. Yes. There is, there is a, a power in our energy, especially if we understand that power and we know how to use it and to move it and to heal with it. Yeah. Yeah. If we were taught from a young age about how energy moves and uh, comes to and forth from our body, would have a better idea of our interactions in the world and, and in nature, but it's not taught and it's nearly been squashed out because we're about to go to a pretend technology world. Right. Um, I was just, was just thinking of something with technology. It's like Discord is, this whole Discord experience is kind of magic in itself and the in, because at an instance, we're all connected through technology. But I'm sitting here thinking, okay, this is a good aspect of technology, but then not so good. So particle accelerators like CERN that are doing things, that's dark magic. Where like Discord is like light magic. So I can see where, again, it's like there's the core and then on either, on either side, they're like bookends. You know, I think I like what you said, Jules. I think that the real issue for me with things like the accelerator and all that is we don't know what they're doing. They're holding the truth from us. They're keeping us in the dark as much as they can. You know, and I'm not I'm not discounting what you just said, but what bothers me is all of this technology, so much of it we don't know what they're doing with it. That's true, and I I probably did take a little dip my toes out to Speculation Island, is that I can only speculate, and I, I say that because of seeing the images of Shiva and everything. There, that, so that's where I perceive it to be coming from the dark side. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I wish we knew more what I what they were doing with everything. Shiva was not a good sign. <laughs> Well, one common thing I've noticed with magic so far is that it seems to be like the art of using some kind of science slash technology slash know-how or knowledge against people that are not aware of that said, what I just previously said, um, because if you don't have that uh, dynamic, let's say if somebody shows you a card trick, but you've seen it before, you know how the card trick works, so it's not magic anymore. So I think magic is, to me, it's the art of using the unseen science, but you have to know what your audience is capable of seeing or what they already know in order for it to be magic to them or it's not going to work. No matter if it's light or dark. Well, in that kind of magic, Polly, we're on stage magic, trick magic, you know. I agree, but, excuse me, um, uh, healing magic and that can work without that person knowing. Um, but that's what I mean. So, to them, it's not magic. They're just healing. Like yeah, yeah, the people yeah. that are performing that 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 so called magic, they're not to in my in my head, they wouldn't be necessarily thinking of it as magic. It's just something healing. that they can do to heal somebody yeah, else. It's uh, not magic to them. Yeah, it's magic to the from. person being healed. Yeah. But it's not magic to the person that's doing it because they know how it works. Yeah, and if you were around a bunch of other healers and healed someone, it wouldn't be any big deal anyway. <laughs> right. So it wouldn't be magic, right? Yeah. It would you consider it a miracle? I would. Well, if you, well, it's just a standard operation. Yeah, if you do it lots, it's it is a miracle. We we acknowledge it as a miracle, 
um, hey. and it comes from Creator. We we acknowledge that, and before we do anything, we um, hey. talk to Creator, talk and say that. But uh, when you do it all the time, you know it's just the energy flowing through you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it takes a sparkle, like anything. When you do it lots of times, the sparkle kind of disappears a little, and you see more of the reality of it, even though it still holds the same respect. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for someone new, it would be, wow, wow, wow. You know, I have people now, I've got people that have been walking with me for a long time, and they'll come up and say things to me, and then they'll look at me and go, well, that's not big news to you, is it? <laughs> and I just smile and go, no, but I'm really happy that you got there. <laughs> um, but again, but you you said it, you're really happy. Yep. Yeah, or something. They got Maybe there. there's a different word. They discovered the miracle of it, yeah, and it... And it Brought, yeah. It brought happiness and joy and the energy yeah. sparkles. Um, Maybe, I guess all I'm saying is I'd, I'd like to see humans keep a little bit of the magic that we can. Well, we do in laughter and stuff. Like when we laugh and care for each other, that's yeah. we walk in that magic. Um, yeah. Oh, planet Earth saying? is magic. Yeah, well, I was going to say that about magic. nature yeah because yeah. i mean i've seen nature sorry you go first donny <laughs> you got us going now the sharon biggest magic, <laughs> the biggest magic i always considered is love mm. yeah. Yeah. And without it yeah. that's the biggest magic and the biggest miracle is a child by a being born yes in my eyes me too, yeah, that is me too. In my eyes, that's what i see yeah, the, the any mother. and I think any any animal like a cat or a dog or any kind of birth, you think about it, it grows inside this being, it comes out beautiful. I mean, that's got to be magic of some kind. It's certainly a miracle. Did you know before a child was born, it has to have um, the approval of so many other spirits upstairs before they come down? Um, you were talking about synchronicity before um, and healing sorry about the music in the make synchronicity and healing um, what I found is when things happen that we perceive as miracles even or just healing or magic the upstairs has to arrange so many different things for the synchronicity to line up like dominoes for it to manifest down here you know what I'm getting at? Yes. Jules wants to say something. The cat. We got the cat paw up. I love that kitty. I'm going to have to. I do. Before, before we drift away, talking about birth, that is a miracle itself. But a little further, that coming from another miracle. The human body is just a miraculous biological technology in the sense that we are all this water operated. We're a fully functioning biological computer operated by a stack of cholesterol that's the brain. It being just being human is a miracle itself. I think so too. I found one thing when the spirit hits the body, it's a whole different ball game. And the body's like keyed in to natural technology so when it hears certain frequency mu music it will act on that when people lay hands on it for healing it will act on that when it the body is told that it's loved it it flourishes and when it's told it's not it does the opposite um so to me yeah to me it's a um technological a biological technological machine that has been geared to energies and vibrations and out of that comes magic and miracles that if you want to put it that way wow <clears throat> they're all strung together with a very fine line i was thinking um so say you had technology mm. that could heal right it's a little pen looking thing and it gives out a vibration and you wave it over the part of the body 
and it heals it and it's very and it could be very much like the energy that comes out of our hands when we heal or from our voices when we sing and heal um it wouldn't surprise me if they've already got it and they're holding it back from humans because i've heard of things called bio beds and stuff like that for healing and i was wondering whether they harness the same energies as we do as people when we do healing what do you reckon people if they do because there there's a thing called the tent machine that it, you attach it or you place it near where what you want healed and it emits out little pulses that are healing um is that the mag um, i got a machine similar is it that the magnetic pulse machine yeah so the, it yeah it, it's a device that that sends that and it heals yep yeah, I got one of them. They're brilliant. I was a bit hesitant at first, but then when I saw the energy coming out of it, it is like what comes out out of our hands, but more intensified. Um, and I use it to assist me in healing sometimes. Um, pardon, Donny. That's why clever people. You see, most clever people have got a stick with them. A stick, yeah. That's the, yes, that's the intensifier. <laughs> <laughs> we'll not go any further. Then. Yeah, only because I got busted the other day. <laughs> Walking around with a stick. <laughs> and I didn't think anyone knew. <laughs> no, you're right, my brother. No, Actually, I've got a question for you, Donnie. Um, natural technology. We've got stones that emit energy right yes. and and now there we know them as technology right but there's no wires or no wires. stuff or anything like that can you explain to the listeners a little bit about what we have there without going too far and getting into trouble <laughs> yeah yeah it's we have held that stone before you this one uh the shape of the stone uh the what the stone is turf and plus on top of that uh sharon should know this but it's been uh silicon has been melted over it right and you know, if I, uh, my calculations are correct silicon is what they use in computers these days isn't it um. Yeah, are you saying they use it for they use it for healing? I don't think I've heard yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, 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 these stones. Some of these stones are for healing, and some of these stones are for killing. Mm. And right. some are for communication. They are energy stones, but the mm. the person who held it before you has got their DNA in it. They got their part of their spirit, their part of their soul in that stone. Mm. It's like um for what a better word you could use is a, a usb stick yes. and donny uh, i don't know if people know but in our culture we don't touch these other stuff so if you had a boomerang and um you use it all the time no one's to touch it without your permission because it has yeah, your energy in it yeah and it could be detrimental for the person who can have picked it out uh, held it so the, these artifacts these rocks that are natural technology they would have the same thing hey yes that's right do you think um, um i i i think this do you do you think back then when we use the natural technology on a daily basis that each person had their own specified signature uh, tools yes 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 See, your old uncle used to say to me, um, one man, one dog, one man, one horse. Otherwise, it was his own personal item and no one else should use it. Because you uh, give it, say, a dog to somebody else, you could upset the balance you had with that dog because another person is ahead with your dog. It's really hard to explain, but... Uh, when it comes to personal items, you've got your DNA on that. 
you've got your energy put into that. Um, I just got to go outside. I can't hear you properly. <laughs> We're listening. Um, it's all right. We're listening to you, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, uh, yeah, let's go back in time. According to what I've been told, our people used to have a civilization and where uh, it's hard to explain, but I'll give it the best I shot I can get. We had our own technology, totally different to what it is today. But it, it um, it's like if you held a rod, a special stone, and if you know how to access it, the memory of that stone will come through to you. And now, is that uh, magic? Is it a miracle? Or is it science? We just don't know, do we? It could be all three. Well, yeah, in that instance, I believe it is. Yeah, yeah. But it, we did have a civilization years and years ago. But we decided to go back to the way we originally were. Because we didn't believe it was working with our spirituality right. Yeah. And um, I've never let too many secrets say it's out. Do I, you know? Yeah, we're fringing around the edges here, bro. We're right. <laughs> 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 um, uh, and uh, how many times have we had discussions, Donnie, and we've seen stuff, and it always looks like it's been blown up and melted. It looks like a blown up, melted building, and then trees and that have grown over the top of it. How often do we find stuff like that here? All over the place. Yeah. Me and Donnie speak for hours on the phone, comparing. Oh, I saw this. I saw that. We need a helicopter. Yeah. Back. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's looked like it's been blown apart. Like. Yeah. How would you put it? Like a massive civil war broke out. Yeah. And they destroyed all these sites. For some unknown reason. Yeah. And you know, when I think about the technology back then. I don't see machinery like we have now. I keep seeing more natural technology like our people had. And they... Yes, that's right. Yeah, they had something for everything. They actually had things that could blow things up. Um, more natural technology. And I feel in this age of humanity where we're at, we need to adjust technology to a natural form that harmonises with nature. With, yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I agree. No, I, I get the feeling that, and maybe I'd like to hear from you two on this as well, that when I watch all of the things roll out that we're going through right this moment, this has happened before. Probably not once, yeah. but many times. Yeah. Yes, and, indeed. And we have done this before. Like, I feel like I have done this before. I think we've all talked about that. Yes. Um, and it feels like where we are is the people who are playing the game use this as an opportunity to keep sending us back to the beginning, to where they had the power and we were the dum-dums. And um, I think this time, I'm not gonna go back to sleep. Maybe the blessing is that we know about the previous times. Yes. Yes. Yeah, our spirit knows. Sorry, Donny, go. No, I was just going to say to Sharon, like, some of our um, uh, technology today is actually detrimental to us. It's detrimental to this earth. And to mother, um, but we keep using it, and eventually, one day, mother's going to say, "Enough is enough." I believe that's happened before; it will happen again. 
Yeah, I believe. How many times do we have to make the same mistake till we get it right? Yes. That's that's the $24,000 question. And, and how do we grab the awakeness that we need to keep and move forward? Not it's keep a magic getting number. Uh, uh, there's a magic the number, Polly? Miracle number? Well, so what do you mean, Polly? Well, there's lots of magic numbers. Nine is a magic number. Are we on number nine? 432 is a magic number. Are we on 432? There, there's so many magic numbers. I don't even want... I mean, it would probably bend the idea of what magic is people, I think. Because to me, I mean, if you understand something, it can't be magical. There has to be that element of uncertainty or unknowing that you don't know how or why it works or what it is. That's what makes it magic. Otherwise, it can just be explained. So there has to be that, like, it's you can't explain magic or else you're just not, you're just taking the magic out of it, in my opinion. No, it's still magic. No matter what it is. I still feel magical when I heal people. I can feel the energy going from, flowing through my body. And because of the law of what you give and, you know, uh, what's that thing? You know, what I give, I'll get back vice versa as I'm giving healing I'm getting back this awesome feeling a magical feeling I call it but you yeah. use the word law yeah L-O-R-E there's well, nothing yeah but there's nothing magical about laws they just exist right well it depends how you I don't know depends how you feel about it like, yeah it depends what you like and what, what floats your boat <laughs> It kind of goes back to what, I mean, it, it, it's kind of like what Donnie said that made me think about this. What, like, it, he kept saying, is that like magic or is it a science that we just don't know about? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, everything, everything that we don't know about seems magical until we know about it. And then it's not magical anymore. Right. Yeah, well, probably... Maybe we're not ready. Oh, Sorry, right. go ahead, Donnie. Yeah, you keep going. I, I considered law, L-O-R-E, is a guideline. Yeah. Uh, if you step over that guideline, you will be punished for it. Universal guidelines, so, I'll call them there, is another Yeah, it's a universal guideline. Uh, everyone's got to respect that law. And they're That's simple. universal law. They're no different to if you, if you go near the fire, you're going to burn yeah. yourself. So. Well, to me, it seems like magic might be like kind of a way of marking something, like that is supposed to be recognized, but it's not going to tell you why. <laughs> mm. It's like a way of learning something. Yeah, actually, if it's not magical, it's not interesting. You don't want to know why it works if it's not magical kind of thing. For me, um, there have been times where I've been asked to do something by upstairs go and heal someone and they wouldn't divulge the information on the person so I did my healing and then after I finished my healing they divulged the information on the person and when I found that information they knew that I would have balked at healing that person as a human being myself and my own morals and whatever right I would have went no nah, I'm not bloody healing him he don't deserve it but on a higher level everyone deserves healing um, so they tricked me into healing him and then gave me the info on what kind of fella he was after it. And I just laughed. When I realised what they'd done, I laughed at myself because I realised how uh, how I have flaws you know, walking in this body. Like, because I would have went, no, fuck him, no. You would have said no too without me going in detail. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's just like um, if you were walking down the street and you come across Pol Pot and he's been shot, would you stop and help him? Or would you keep walking? Yeah, see, that's what it comes down to, that moment. 
Yeah, yeah. Depends. It depends on 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 how you're grabbed within your heart. I mean, I think that's a very interesting question, but I think at the moment we are often grabbed in our heart, and we have to help. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it, it, I couldn't answer that question ahead of time. It could be. What if that person was writhing all over the sidewalk, regardless of what they were doing? Something you could do could stop their pain. Yep. Would probably take mercy on them. Yep, I agree, Sharon. Yes. Because that's what's happening to me often. And believe me, I'm not that nice of a person all the time, so I hear you. <laughs> I, it'd be, it's easy ahead of time to go, no, like Mussolini, I go, no, I just let him rot. But that's not true, I probably wouldn't. I tend to do this, I'd be sitting there, <laughs> sitting there healing, talking to him, going, well... Here I am healing you, but you do know that you did some things that you shouldn't have, don't you? <laughs> I'm not going to wear, and by the way, I'm not going to wear a mask while I help you heal. I'm going to breathe extra yeah. hard. <laughs> I'm just going to let you know. <laughs> it would be That's funny. Luck, because I, I can be a hard ass in that area, especially when it comes to oh, yeah. people doing the right and wrong thing. Um, that's why I wanted to be the executioner. <laughs> I wanted a job as an executioner. I thought I'd be the perfect person. So what have you done? You do understand this and where you're going, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, I joke around. I think that would be the worst job in the world to try to do something like that. It would be so soul-sucking. Oh. Uh, try to have to make that decision. Oh, well, the executioner doesn't actually make the decision. They've been told to off that person, so the decision's been made. Right. They've just got to you, do it. You, you still have, but you still have to follow through. Yeah, you do. I'm pretty sure they just get the notification on their cell phones now. Yeah, they do. You've been terminated. What is it? <laughs> you have been deleted. <laughs> yeah, swipe left oh. to execute. <laughs> I gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, actually, that's a good point with technology. All right, so we know magic, magic and miracles. They've got a form of uh, energy to them, which is governed mostly by creator and the mother and that, right? But technology, at what point does technology start deciding things like that to, for us? Oh, this person is a harm against the community. Let's off them. Like, is, are we going to give... Happening, I think it's happening now. It's certainly happening in China. That's what, you know, they've got that software that it, it, it's all, there's no feeling, there's no humanity in it at all, right? It's just computer. It's just an AI. There's no soul. There's no humanity. That's what they want to run everything because then they don't have to, you know, humans don't have to make the tough decisions. So there's no magic. Me, there's no magic in that because at that point all the magic on life is gone if it's just some ai computer because what i'm saying here is there can be a little bit of technology in magic and miracles but there can't be any magic and miracles in technology because yeah. hey. i've seen it i've seen what they want to bring here in australia them dog looking things and my instinct is to catch an axe, go and grab an axe and go chop and um they want to yeah. make them part of the society and i'm like i'm sure there's other people that feel the same as me you know it's like having a rabid dog running around on the street um unpredictable unknown uh, no feelings like you said sharon like you know old and indifferent yeah and who knows what they're programmed with? Who knows what's in the programmer's heart? It's like when you wield magic or healing, you want to make sure that that healer is a good person because you don't know what they wield in their heart. And when they heal you, you want it to be um, good stuff. Um, so who knows what's in the programmer's heart? Or are well, they... You know, that's such a good question because we talked about that a couple of weeks ago where I said the Boston Dynamics man was kicking these robots over with his foot show you that if you kick them over they could get back up and i remember commenting on kev's show that guy should not be doing that that robot will remember that that happened yeah because we are the parents yeah because we, we discussed once on a on an ancient round table 
about sanctioned beings, like when does te technology become a sanctioned being? And we'd give it the respect of all the other things that we have in this realm. You know, we wouldn't go and ki kick a cat or a cow or a dog or a bird. When do they get that respect? How, you know, what is it that lets us know that? Because I, I feel at that point, the magic and the miracles, they become part of life. If they, yes, you yes. know, if they get to that point, and we have to treat them with respect. Not they're not there. I yet. so agree with you, absolutely. That's I mean, going to be hard for me. But I'm terrified if we don't. I I feel like if we don't give them the respect, they're, they're already there. I mean, I think what one of the things that's happened for me in the last couple of years is whether I like it or not, they're here. They have they they are becoming a huge part of our society now, and we are the parents. How are we raising them? Oh, look, we're supposed to be the caretakers of this earth, and we've mucked it up. Imagine being the parents of robot. What are we going to do? Like, I want to talk more about that. Oh, can we have a, a small two-minute break and come back, and we'll talk about the future of technology and what we're actually looking at here and is, is there magic and miracles in this life for technology so you got it, you got it. yep so let's do it let's learn for a short brief bit and okay. pick, it up. pick it up i'll put my technological hat on see you in a minute okay i'm gonna boil it they're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together, kooky, the Adams family. Their house is a museum when people come to see them. They really are a scream, the Adams family. So get a witch's shawl on, a broomstick you can crawl on, we're gonna pay a call on, the Adams Family. Hey, and welcome back from that short break. We've been talking about magic, magic, miracles and technology. And we've discussed a lot about magic and miracles. Now we're going to talk about 
a bit about technology in the future and what we're facing now in the world. And is there going to be any room for magic, magic and miracles as technology gets more advanced and uh, smarter? It'll get to a point where it deserves respect from others to exist and we're going to have to learn to live with them. Um, to me, that is very frightening because technology is just way out of my realm. And um, we got to find a way to meet in the middle, I suppose. And let's talk about what it's going to look like, what this technology that's coming out is going to look like and how it's going to feel in our lives. Because we as uh, natural living beings, uh, magic, magic and miracles always happen through in us every moment of the day, even if we don't notice. You get the odd big one that flashes and we go, wow, that was a miracle. We can feel the magic of life. Where does this, what place will this hold in the future of technology? So anyone got some ideas what the future is going to look like and how we're going to fit it all together? It's going to turn magic into magic calculated. Press the button and magic, magic, bring. Press that button. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Does that mean I'm going to get magic, bad magic? <laughs> no, seriously, though, um, it's going to take away a lot of things that we don't even think about. Um, already. I wonder if it'll be, uh, it'll continue to be one of the things that divides us. There's going to be those of us who want to cherish this and keep this in our lives because without it, there is no life. And there'll be the people who don't won't miss it. You know, they they won't necessarily notice it. I don't know. I had an interesting experiment. I've had to spend a couple of days in a place where there is no computer or anything for me. And all I wanted to do was be around people and laugh and play a game of cards or you know all the old fashioned stuff that we used to do. I actually didn't crave the computer. It wasn't until I come home and it was there in front of me that I switched it on. But I still crave wanting to have that human reaction and playing cards and stuff, if, if you get what I mean. But other people aren't like that. They love their computer stuff. They'll sit there all day. Those head things are coming out where you put your visor glass things on and you enter a new, different world. Like how is magic gonna? How is energy gonna move in those worlds? What are we gonna do when you walk out the front door and you see this robotic person walking up the road? Hello, have a good day. Will they even say that to you? Are they gonna be programmed that way? What's in the programmer's heart? What happens if he's a bad magic person and he made technology and put bad magic in it? Like, oh, we don't know. Most people don't even think magic's real. <laughs> for it even to continue to exist. So, come on. Yes, my course. Well, we have to continually move further and further into the country, into the place, you know, to a place where there's less and less technology. You know what I mean? Like, just, you have to go find land. You can actually feel Mother Earth, be in touch with the whole magic part of, of living. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, Kevin, Jimmy brought the, the, the even 2024, which is what, two years, two years, three years from now? Or are we going to be even next year, 2022? I don't know. Those are all very good questions. And I kind of wonder, I look back in history and we, we talked about natural technology and that we know that they had different technologies in the past. But um, there, now we see evidence of some sort of disaster. Is are we? Do you think we're going to go to that point again, where we leave magic, magic and miracles behind, go towards technology? Think we've got this u butte technology, and it doesn't match with the mother's energy, and we have some sort of disaster, energetical disaster, because even the pyramids look like they blew up. Like they look like really cool natural energy, um, a type of natural mm. technology, right? But even they have evidences of blowing up. Is the you know this is what we could be facing? Do you think? I do. I do. I I I kind of I think that 
the powers that should not be, as Nase calls them, plan this party that they're 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 that they're throwing for everybody. And now they're throwing this huge party. A lot of us would like to not attend. <laughs> but they've made it all inclusive. And when you do that, when you are anti when you plan a party and you choose for other people what is good for them, the universe doesn't like that. That's what's in our favor. But my big I think a miracle for us, Luna, is that we hopefully will see where the universe pushes back. And it's like, excuse me, happy powers, but that was not the way we were going. We understand you you plan the party and you send out all the invitations and you've you're using all your weapons to to go this way, but the universe and even though the powers will have all these contingency plans if it doesn't go their way. Everyone knows here, sitting here talking to each other tonight, that pushing the universe your way doesn't always work the way you think it's going to. True that. And I was just thinking that that the outcome of that would be classed as a miracle because it supersedes everything. Like, I think it would be a huge miracle. I would be, I'm praying for it every day. <laughs> <laughs> I am, and in doing so, you have to remember that we're in the adjustment. That includes everything else as well. <laughs> we're ready for adjustment. <laughs> I, underst I understand that, but, but the, you know, if that doesn't happen, I'm not excited about where they want to take us. And no. we are not the arbiters of where everybody's going. No. They've, they've made themselves the arbiters. But even I'm not the arbiter of where everybody should go because who am I? Well, I think that too, Sharon, because I look at these robots they're pumping out and I went, no one asked me if I wanted them. And I sometimes <laughs> I think, how, how dare they have the right to decide for us? You know? Exactly. They, if they want them things, keep them in your own backyard. Don't put them in mine. That's how I feel. And But isn't that for all of us? Like, isn't that a natural L-O-R-E? That's a natural law. You be what you yeah. want to be in your circle. Don't put it on me, because as soon as you do, that's when um, the boomerang effect and all of you know the ripple effect all come into place. Because if I have another miracle question for everybody here, if we all visualize where we want to go in the future, can we create that? I believe so. What do you feel, think? I think you yes, Sharon. I know one thing when you, um, in your mind, have good thoughts and stuff and you put them out, you'll walk into it tomorrow and if you do the same, you'll walk into it. That's regardless of what life actually has for you, right? Because, yeah, when you're born, there's a little piece of paper that says this is what your life has for you and what you do in your life is up to you. So if you walk, yeah, you walk that with good feelings and good thoughts um, and don't be selfish and all that, that's what realm you're creating for yourself. I totally believe in that. You can, I'll give you a little example. It's a selfish kind of thing, but it, I was young when I was doing it. I wanted a black leather jacket, fringe leather jacket, and I just knew that one day it would be provided for me, the energy would go out and it would come to me. I wouldn't have to do nothing, and it happened. It not only happened, I got two. So I remember, I realised then oh, I'll always be provided for. I just got to put that good, good energy out and just know that it will be delivered. And it and it did. It got brought back to me in that manner. But you can do that with anything. I think where it crosses the line is if I went, I want to be a millionaire and take over the world. I think I'd be having a bit of trouble. And I think that's where you go into the dark side. Hey. Um, I, I think you're right and one of the people I like to listen to is called Once Upon a Timeline she talks a lot about Mandela's a lot that's her whole show. her whole show is Mandela's wow and she's always saying just keep your mind on the positive place that you want to be because her experience is the Mandela's are showing her all of the changes on the planet that is constantly happening 
Yeah. I just love it. I always had a hard time with the Mandela things. I didn't, like, didn't know, did someone use technology and go back and change things just to stuff us around? Um, did, was it just a freak of nature? Like, you know, you can walk out and find this flower that looks totally different than everything else and it looks weird and stuff. Like, what was that? I never really got too much. Upstairs just said, don't mind with that, keep doing what you got to do. But in the back of my head, I'm always like, well, what is that? Did someone do it deliberately or is it freak of nature? Like, is it magic or technology? <laughs> or is it just a, is it just an option that is it something that happened with them? Like you said, they made some changes, so it was an outcome of the changes. For every action is an equal reaction, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's just a manifestation of some of the changes, ch ch which changing. means we can change it the other way. We can. We have that power individually I, and collectively. Um, and, yeah, that's why I, I speak up these days because I go around and wake up, wake up too. How, you know how brilliant you are? You know what kind of energy you could wield? But it can be dangerous because if you wake up the wrong person. I'm, <laughs> I met a person once. They had no idea of what energy they wield. They didn't even know who they were and they had no idea who they were in la past lives. They were totally asleep. And I said to my husband, does he realise what he is? And he goes, no, he's asleep. I went, yeah, I thought so. Let's leave him that way. Because <laughs> he wasn't the kind of person we wanted waking up in this world. So we left him to his ordinary physical world and never mentioned anything about spiritual stuff. Um... And that's what brings me to think some people need just a technology, a, heck, this is a tongue twister, a technologically physical world because they actually don't have what others have, um, natural technology. And good for them, you know, because we have to live with everybody. Like the machines that are coming, the robots that are coming, the technology that's coming, and we got to live with it to a degree. If it's going to kill us, well, then we have a right to stand up and go no. But if it's really supposed to help us, like the bio beds and the other stuff that I've been hearing about, um, good, they're good things. I hope. I'm trying to bridge the gap here. This is me trying to compromise <laughs> and talk myself into it because <laughs> I really don't like technology, but, you know, I don't like other things in the world, but they're there, so we just got to learn to live with them. Um, yeah, well, it's like I was just sitting here thinking of how we often talk of the black man's telephone, the, the telepathy that, yep. that magic that all that we can connect with. When radio killed the video star, the mobile phone killed the black fella telegraph. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, because we do still have it, as you know. Um, but the young people uh, got their heads stuck in the phone. That's their form. Um, that's our worries. We'd like to chuck the phone away and take them out of the bush for a couple of months and get them fit all back proper, you know. But then they'll just come back in the city and turn their phone on and go to Facebook and go, oh, look, my friend had curry for dinner. <laughs> well, my friend had an ice cream, or oh, she's gone here, or whatever they do. You know, not paying out of them, good on you. I, I shudder to think what it would be like if I was born now, and I was a teenager, and with the way I am, how would it be? I might not have even been a nice person, who knows? I could have brought the dark out in me instead of the light, the technology. I don't know. That's up to creator. Maybe there the, the the younger generation needs to be where they are. What's being rolled out? I think there's it's scary, but we may need to trust that they're going to do the right thing because they have they have the connection to the technology like we did to Mother Nature. Yeah. Right? So that connection will be what they need to do what they need to do, which is to untangle some of this stuff or maybe take it in a different direction. And that's I'm counting on them. I think there's a lot of good young people out there. 
you know, they're just different than us. Yeah. True. And uh, they're smart, they're well-meaning, they have heart and soul, it's just different. And the, you're right, the world is going to look very different, but I do think they care about the planet. You know, um, I know it's gone to an exaggerated degree right now with all this climate crap, but I think many of their heart is in the right place. They want to bring us back to something more reasonable. So hopefully that's what they're going to be able to do. Um, the thing that I love about the young people is they're not re very reverent of older people. Which will help us with the powers that should not be. <laughs> hopefully, ultimately, they won't listen to them. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. That's a good thing. Yeah. I have a little concern when we go back to the magic realm with young people because what they the kind of magic they're being exposed to is mostly dark magic on TV and in music clips and um, all that sort of stuff and I wonder maybe I don't want to know <laughs> what they think about it or are they just dismissing it and putting their head into technology? But in saying that too, I know that certain technologies do have dark magic in them. So I find it a bit of concern. It's out of my hands. I only do what I do. It's up to Creator to bring out the to pull the rabbit out of the hat at the end of the day. <laughs> Seems we're talking about magic. So yeah, I I'm counting on Creator. That creators made the world and the people in it exactly what they need to be. Like I think that the, the children that are born, all of the children that are born, come preloaded with the right software. They've got they've got the goods for the time that they've been born, and we may not be able to see right away what their role is. They have every generation, in my opinion, is something they're supposed to accomplish. Yeah, I see that too. I, I can feel that. Um, I'll talk to some young people and they, they're brilliant spiritually. They've got a beautiful minds. And I feel yes. terrible kind of handing it over to them because I'm not handing them anything decent. You know, I'm, so I'm handing them, oh, look, this is the trouble we're having and uh, we've been working mm -hmm. on it in this way and I can see that you are too and handing it to them, I feel shame. I feel a bit of shame. No, we didn't get we didn't get a good deal when we came here either. The, the the baby boomer generation, we had a lot of work to do. We had to help our parents heal from the depression and the war. We had to. We lost Kennedy. We lost so many brilliant leaders in the '60s. We had to go to therapy for it seems like a million damn years. Yep. Yeah. But. Many of us are still here, awake, seeing the game you know, all these many years later. So even though we may not be handing them a good game, and it, they will grow from it. They will learn. And it's funny you mentioned the, funny you mentioned the '60s, '60s, Sharon, because actually that's when Magic and Magic kind of started making its comeback. Um, good and bad. Okay. You know, um, they brought it back. Prior to that, it was still a taboo in any shape, no form. But come the 60s, yeah, that brought back magic and magic. And unfortunately, now they're using it straight in front of our face. Um, and it's like that that's their tool. They've played that part the whole time. Going back to that man that, whose name starts with C that I won't even say. And... C R O, <laughs> the Crow Man. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Mhm, mm mhm. Yeah. So, anyone want to add anything before we keep raving on? Me and Sharon, like old ladies having a tea party. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone's all quiet. No, I was just chatting here and chatting. So we got the but chat room running here. Going, back, going to the 60s, that's when, for me, 
when I'm coming across logos or images of the 60s, it's all of this, even the font of the writing, the hippie writing and everything, and Tavistock, the music, the culture that came with it, the magic mushrooms. Oh, the magic mushrooms. You, you talking about that magic mushroom from Inner Earth? that um, can read minds. <laughs> I still can't get over that. <laughs> Magic mushrooms. That's Polly's, Polly and Naysay's corner there. So that's another. I mean, there, there's, there's magic everywhere. <clears throat> there there's is. miracles everywhere. There is magic everywhere. Um, if you sit still long enough, you can appreciate nature and the sounds, the elements, the vibration. That's magic itself. Yeah, that was a question that I had. Uh, nature, how plants and that have cures, right? They got a cure for everything. In nature, you'll find it. There's, there's an illness. Go to nature. There's a plant or, or a seed or a nut or something that is going to cure it. I see that as a miracle, you know. Creator made that miracle of working yes. all that out, foreseeing all the illnesses and making a plant to, that would um, accommodate that and having that plant spirit going along happily with it. Um, Plant, plants are medicine. That's originally how Creator wanted it to wanted things to be, to heal ourselves naturally with nature. And in the... And man came along and created pharmacia. And from there, things just got way out of control. They did. Because back in the old days, if you made something out of herbs and that and did something, fixed something, they'd call that magic and they'd call you a witch. <laughs> oh, me, had me. a long history with witches in, in my family. So even that in itself, witches and witches, like magic and magic, like there's a thing there. They put the name witch on actual healers. They were, they were healers. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about then because I got a plan out the back, which is illegal, and you don't smoke it. <laughs> it's a healing plant, and it works that well. I can understand why they made it I illegal, because it, it's for broken bones and stuff like that, and it is fabulous. It's a little miracle plant. But if we go back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, I would have been classed as a magic person, a witch or whatever sorceress for having those plants and mixing them up with different things and the um, village secretly coming to visit me so I can heal them but they wouldn't speak about it to anyone else because they all thought it was magic, bad magic, you know. And I actually wonder, in the time of Inquisition and that when they're going around looking for magic people and killing them, were they really the bad magic ones? Because some of the stuff they did to us classes me as bad in the bad magic realm. You know, the murders, the tortures and all that that they did and the way they hunted these people. I saw that as the bad magic realm and I thought they're, they're killing all the good magic people. That's what it looked like to me when I was young. You mean when they were killing the witches? Yeah, men and women, yeah, because the truth was they were healers and stuff, right? If you're caught making up potions for healing and that, they'll call it a witch's potion and stuff like that, right? Right. And they and they'll kill you and lo or lock you up and beat you, starve you to death, whatever, right? But when I when I I do remember a little bits of it in a past life, but in this life, reading the history of it, I thought to myself, hang on a minute, they're the bad witch magic people, because what they were doing hurting people with blood and virtually sacrifices and cruelty was actually the bad magic because then back then people knew about magic today pe half the people don't believe in it back then they did believe in it and yeah i think the bad magic people started taking over killing the good magic people and now it's kind of even out we're all hidden because the bad magic's still taken over just look at your tv <laughs> Ever wonder if some of the history that they've told us is all a lie? Oh, all how, much, how, how much of our history is true and how much of it is a lie? Most of it. Sure, the bulk of it is a lie. 
And did they and use? Has it really been thousands of years, or three hundred years, or has it just been a hundred years? Well, my spirit says it has not as long as what they're saying. And, and did they use magical technology to trick us? Exactly. I'm beginning to think that, like you said, Luna, that and and Jules, lots of it is a lie. I don't think it's been as long as they've said. And I think that that it's humans forget. And then the, when I look at the Mandela thing, me, that's proof positive. It's very easy to change things. You just just do different software on your computer. Hmm. Oh. So, but I just Everyone's wondering. Looks like Kev Baker's been listening because that is when the World War One armistice was signed. Ooh. Oh, hi, Kev. Hey, Kev was listening. Yeah, interesting. See, scary world of technology. I show, sometimes I go to look into what they what they're up to, and I just go, I don't know if I really want to know. Yeah. I agree. It's um, pretty dark. I, I agree with you. I think lately I can't hear it anymore. Because yeah. I'm not sure how much of it is going to come true anyway. It all depends on how much we, we buy into it. Yeah, exactly. How much we feed it. Because um, yes. going back to magic and magic, it's the intention of the, the person putting it out or the energy <laughs> running through. And the more intent, like the more energy you put on something like that, the more it will manifest. So that's why I tell people, don't worry about what's going on. Concentrate in your own life. Think happy thoughts. Every thought that you think get, that goes to them is like a little pebble when it goes on a big pile. And that's what they're counting on. They're counting on our creative energy to join theirs and manifest what they want, whether it be in, in fear, like in fear, because that's the energy they use. Mm -hmm. um, Notice that I can't listen to people who are too dark right now, like people who who talk with a definitive knowledge of what they think is coming down the road. Can't do it. Can't do it anymore. It's too dark. I I, I like to go back to the woman who's Eva. Her name's Eva. Once upon a timeline, she's always talking. She's always saying, "Visualize the the, the reality you want to live in. Yeah. Keep your mind on that." Yeah. You know, and I think, amen. And well, and you guys have helped me here too a lot. It depends on how, like your energy around you, you can make that be what you want, and you can make it really big if you know how. And they know that law too. They use other people to make it bigger. That's how witches work. They're actually powerless on as individuals, but they're strong as a community. Um, and that's where they falter, because if you you get one on their own and they're not ciphering power from the others, they, they're not that strong. Um, collective, that's the collective thought, um, which we all contribute to. That's why we've got to watch what we think, because it, it'll go into the magical miracle world and someone will snap it up and use it for what they're trying to do. So... I think a lot of those people are fearful and cowardly. I really do. I think that they're cowards at, at, at yeah. the core of their being. Yeah. You I confront so. them, and there's enough of you. They back down so fast, it's not funny. Yeah, they go. It always reminds me of the Wizard of Oz hiding behind the curtain thing, and the true magic yes. was in the people inside themselves, not in him. Right. Yeah. And um, I noticed... Ignore, ignore that man behind the curtain. <laughs> that little man. <laughs> Get out of there. I think we're facing the same. It's just a little man behind a curtain and we all think it's a big, scary monster taking over the world. Um, it took the little puppy to, to, to expose him. And I know there's a lot of magic going around. We need a few more miracles and we've got plenty of technology. It's coming with them, one or not. <laughs> so... so um, all right, anyone else want to add to what we're doing? Because we, we'll be coming to rounding it up soon. And we haven't heard from Brother Naysay yet. Are you talking to us today? <laughs> no. Okay. So, all right. You want to start rounding it up, people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go begin.
Okay. Well, for me, I've delved into the world of technology. Something that I had to face. I'll always keep magic alive and leave a space for miracles in my life. No matter what technology they put upon us. I realise that the fact that we're still here is a, a miracle in itself. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was awesome having a lovely arm there with uh, Brother Donnie about some of our cultural magic and stuff like that, which we might have a talk one day and how far we actually can go and saturate you with it. Uh, that'll be a good talk. Um, yeah, as for magic, magic, miracles and technology, we're right in the middle of it right now and I think we need to walk a bit before we talk about the outcome properly. So, anyone else? Jules? I'll throw you in. Down some things I wanted to say, but it, I'll just say that I'm enjoying the magical, this magical moment utilizing technology with all you miraculous beings. Cool. This magic <laughs> moment. <laughs> Hello and hi, all of you miraculous perfection of unique individualism. Sorry, I've been just listening and hanging with my daughter, the miracle she is, but, uh, in my experience as a self-proclaimed born-again pagan or Anishinaabe, experiencing ceremonies and rituals, I have witnessed things that my public education, social conditioning in the American school system cannot understand or put into words in a scientific matter of what I've experienced, where it is what I call magic with a K or prestidigitation, which is the fancy name for sleight of hand, because there is sleight of hand when it comes to these shaman, medicine men, healers, because the placebo effect is proven to work. However, as I continue my experience in this flesh suit and learn about technology and the exponential rate that it continues to expand, not in a linear, linear sense, but in a spherical sense, being from the center because there's so many different perspectives of technology i have learned that that through electromagnetic technology using focused beams that they can direct into our entity consciousness and subconsciousness something that we think we're seeing something that we think we're hearing or something that we think we're feeling and that do the technological advancement also that there could literally be someone standing next to you at this moment in a cloaking device and not even know they are there and so i continue to ponder you know the ability of entities if they have the technological advancement beyond our capacity and transverse the universe, then they would have this technological advancement to be like in the movie Men in Black, where you push the little silver thread on the back of the guy's ear and his face opens up and you find out that there's a little entity controlling this humanoid. You know, that's where we're at with technology. And from my experience of being in the Navy and the military, I estimated back then when I was there in the 80s that the technological advancement from the general populace was 30 to 40 years advanced. 
And this was just the stuff that I was privy to, and I had a top secret clearance. And I knew on top, you know, what we had, we called outboard, that they had a higher clearance than I did. And so they handled even more, you know, top secret, you know, so somebody at some point knows. And my biggest fear is because magic, depending on the perspective, in my holy trinity of positive, neutral and negative, that there are people that are attempting negative magic for their own benefit instead of attempting positive magic for all's benefit. And through my experience, that when you utilize magic for the benefit of positivity, more times than not, it happens a lot easier with less intention and focus, whereas the negativity, whether you want to call it karma or getting caught up in the universal fight of finding balance, that it will go from one oscillation spectrum to the other spectrum. You know, so whatever we do, do it hopefully in the positivity. And if you doubt us being magic or a miracle, just take a look in the mirror. As you're looking in the mirror, your oogly googlies are seeing the bombardment of three electromagnetic fields colliding at a focus point and thus extrapolating that information through your optic nerves into your brain where your neurotransmitters and receivers are then denoting what it is you're seeing and going into your memory banks and your other synapses to register what you're seeing. All the while, you're breathing in and out and from your lungs, an oxygen molecule is attaching to a red blood cell and it's then going down your artery to your capillary where it releases that oxygen molecule and flips 180 degrees and then it goes all the way back to your heart again to get an oxygen molecule and then it flips 180 degrees in such an exponential rate of velocity and through the viscosity of your vessels and arteries that we would not be able to survive traveling that fast. And all of this is occurring while we're sitting here babbling on in Babylon at the same time. So if you doubt that you are not a miracle, please find the closest mirror and validate that miraculous perfection of unique individualism. And I am so honored and blessed and fortunate to have these precious moments with all of you miracles. And uh, your brilliance is a delight in my darkness. End of rant. Oh, thank you for that, Naisei. <laughs> for you spreading your beautiful magic around. Actually, when you were talking, I was thinking of, i got a saying called order magic. And when you were explaining the body, just automatically doing those amazing miracle things, I thought that's part of order magic, the way things just naturally all take care of themselves. And if we let it, mm -hmm. it'll run fine if we feed it the right stuff. I was also thinking of... Uh, Geomatic. Uh, magic. Friends. Yeah. So in love with you. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I was thinking of the times where I used to call him the science spirit. This spirit used to come visit me and he was like a scientist and he would tell me of technology of the future and show it to me. And these are the things, I'll tell you the things he showed me. One was a little box made out of three different metals and whatever you put in the middle of this box stayed cold and you could make them small or big and take them anywhere. I don't, I don't really recognise the metal that the box is made out of, but on the two other metals inside, one looks like a copper wire. And that's all I know because I'm not scientifically minded in that way. The other thing they showed me was, um, that he showed me was how we cook our food will change. And he showed me out, f out the front of each house was a um, big square white board. And as you look up close to this big square white board, it was actually hundreds and hundreds of little tiny clear fibres. And the sunlight would get forced into these little fibres. 
and um, directed into your house and instead of plugging things into the wall there was a little flap and if you picked up the little flap the light would just come through and it was harmless but when you plugged in your appliance there was a thing inside the appliance that would change that light into energy so once you plug the appliance in it would, your kettle would heat up or your oven would cook or your light would go on and when you pulled it out it was just light again um, the other You're thing, describing what's called white paper. It already exists, probably. <laughs> really, enlighten me. No, you say? Yeah, white paper. It's um, it's what they're now putting on the drones, on the top of the drones. Drones now can be released, and they can stay up. Some of them are allegedly can stay up for three years without landing but they'll bring them in periodically to do just basic maintenance on it. And they run but with on... these new solar cells, right. they can run forever. Yeah, that's what I... And if you think there's not a drone up there with your name on it, or at least your frequency signature, you got some excitement coming up. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they're running on the light. But that's where technology is. Yeah, they're running on the light. Yeah, like... Well, it, pity they turned it into a drone first and didn't give us a new butte kettle and a stove run on. Well, this is Nikola Tesla technology, you know, and then not even to go into, I don't know if anybody's taken any time to look up weaponized nano technology. You know, it's, it's a real thing. And they were worried about this in the 70s. Do you remember that movie Fantastic Voyage? Yep. That basically was the conceptualization of nanotechnology. Right. But they looked at it as that whole quantum, you know, like Ant-Man of where, you know, if they put you in the right electromagnetic field, then they can basically shrink your atoms, you yeah. know, because we're mostly made of space. If you look at the quantum realm, yeah, I've met people There's like more that. Space in between. They got heaps of space in their mind. <laughs> Sorry. That's true. Between but their I gotta let you guys go because my daughter is making me some eggs, so I'll well, be listening again. Thank you for that, Nay. Say we're rounding up anyway. So I appreciate you popping in and giving us that knowledge. So, anyone else? Try and don't try and top that. That was pretty cool, but just. Round our conversation up, Sharon. Thank you. I'm not going to try to top it, but uh, this was a really ex interesting, and I just want to thank you, Luna and Donnie, for sharing really special things that I know you guys are stretching a little bit, you know, to help us see, you know, your culture better. And I really, really appreciate it. I learn a lot every time you are willing to do that. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Thank you for being here. So, okay, Donnie, you want to say anything to say before we leave? Nope. Polly's disappeared. Anyone else? Okay. All right, well, we're going to round it up, people. I want to thank you for listening to this conversation today. I want to thank um, Donnie, Jules, Polly, Sharon, Naysay, and everyone for being here and listening to our conversation. I hope we've given you something to think about. I certainly have. I'm going to have nightmares of technology tonight, you watch. <laughs> Anyway, I want to thank Creator for making this all possible. And we have a beauty for next week. Sharon, you're going to love this one. Understand. I've got to spit it out. Hang on. Um, ah, I didn't write it down. They kept telling me to write it down. You're going to get tongue-tied. <laughs> um, understanding controversy and conspiracies. For next week. So on that note, oh you happy about that one, Sharon? <laughs> oh, my God. Let me loose. Yep, make sure you got the snacks and everything in front of you for next week because we'll be having a break and there will be um, 
pretty exciting, I think. So on that note, I want to thank everyone for being here, everyone for listening in the future. Love to you on this day. And uh, see you next week. Yalu. Hello.